features. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The magic wand. Oh, Tom Thomas, how did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas, your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden Wish Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden Wish Tadish! Hmm. Golden Wish Tadish! Will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three! <laughs> ah, ah! 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 Hey, Tom Thomas, please tell your rabbits that they can stop barking so loudly! Ah! Ah! for attacking helpless little kids. Wait, I'll make you bigger now. Golden wish, Tadish. Ah. What, you scared? So you're only brave enough to chase little kids around? Wow, I'm huge. I'm as huge as Tom Thomas. I'm huge! Oh, no, like, be careful! Ah! Ah! Ugh. How can you live being this tall? It's so inconvenient. And I thought it was tough when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. I was dreaming that someone had given me a magic wand. And then I had to make it big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful. That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do, because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today, we have the internet and telephones we can use. 
Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. <laughs> Good joke. Could this be a dream, too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> the armor. 2, 23, 24, 25. Ready or not, here we come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? <gasps> Who is that? Sick of the night, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knight's horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Because I can't. Don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. 
the spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> the disguise. Mm -hmm. Ugh, good. Tom Thomas, why do you need a second aquarium? <laughs> Especially without any fish. First of all, it's a terrarium. And it's not for fish, it's for lizards and snakes. Ooh. My friend Katya asked me to take care of him while she's away. That's why I brought him here. Take care of who? There's no one in there. Ah! What is that? <laughs> it's a chameleon, Nolik. I think he's awesome. It's a bad idea to take him out. He might run away. Don't you worry. I got him. What a monster. But how come I couldn't see him before? It's because a chameleon knows how to disguise himself by changing the color of his whole body. <laughs> Have you ever seen a military uniform? They have special patterns and colors that help soldiers hide. That's called camouflage, and people learned it from animals. For instance, a caterpillar can look like a twig, and a seahorse can look like a piece of coral. An ordinary gray rabbit becomes white in the winter, so a wolf will have trouble finding it in the snow. But the champion of camouflage is the chameleon. This master of disguise can change its color in just a matter of seconds. Hey, Tom Thomas, where'd your chameleon go? Oh, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it camouflaged. He won't hide for long. Let's find him. <laughs> Chusaka, have you seen the chameleon? Where is he? See him? No, he's not going to let us catch him. We're going to have to, to trick him into coming to us. Uh-huh. We can set a trap with something that he likes. What do they like, I wonder? What else? Their food. And what do chameleons eat? Well, like flies or caterpillars, roaches. Where's the fly going to come from? Well, what if... What? Oh, Simka, just you wait. I'm going to get you. Hey, we've got to help Katya. You don't see the caterpillar complaining. <laughs> Quiet. Nolik, you start buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, like a fly. Yeah, and flap your wings, too. Simka, how long do I gotta keep doing this? Until the chameleon shows himself. Just keep buzzing. Tom Thomas, there he is. Grab him. Uh, uh, uh.
In the army, they use camouflage all the time. They use nets that look like bushes, paint their tanks in colors that make them blend into their surroundings, and even fly in special planes that can't be seen by radar. They do everything they can to disguise their location. But it's not just the army that uses disguises. Photographers camouflage themselves to take pictures of wild animals. People use makeup to camouflage their blemishes. And artists, they disguise old walls with bright, happy pictures. And people just love to put on masquerade parties where they disguise themselves in costumes and masks. And of course, fixies have their own great disguise. Remember? Well, what is it? Now he won't run away. So, Mr. Master of Disguise, what are you gonna say now? If only I could disguise myself that well. Nolan, what are you talking about? You know how to disguise yourself a hundred times better than him. Ah, oh, you're right. Hey, chameleon, look and learn. Here's a real disguise. The electric kettle. No, your chin was below the bar. Whew, that's all. I can't do anymore. You weakling. You're the weakling. I'm not. I just haven't eaten in a while, and that's why I lost my strength. You're a slave to food, Tom. And you see, that's the difference between us fixies and you humans. Many people wrongly assume that the only way Fixies could live is by stealing food off of humans' tables. Or worse yet, by stealing it from their refrigerators. That's just a lie. It's not true at all. Fixies don't eat any kind of human food. So then where in the world do the Fixies get their energy, you're wondering? It's very simple. A Fixie's entire life is connected with devices. Fixies not only live inside of devices, but they take care of them and help them live longer. And in return for their help, these devices share part of their energy with the Fixies. So there you go. The Fixies help devices, and devices help the Fixies. Yes, we Fixies and machines have a symbiotic relationship. So we don't eat leftovers like cockroaches, because we're Fixies. One, two, three, whoa! How's it possible that a big boy like you doesn't know how to make any food for himself? I'm able to cook, but I'm not allowed to turn on the stove. What can you make without it? Oh, yes. We have instant oatmeal. Look. Do you like oatmeal? You're joking. Only my folks say oats are healthy and make you stronger. Great. Well, then how do you cook it? It's not hard. All you gotta do is add hot water, and I'm allowed to turn on the kettle. Stop and check if there's water in there. If there's none, you can burn out the kettle. It's got enough. Then you can turn it on. Hey, tell me, how does the kettle turn off? I mean, how does it know when the water's hot enough? Inside of an electric kettle, there's a heater hidden underneath its bottom. When you turn on the kettle, the heater warms up the water until it boils. And the boiling water gives off steam that heats up a special metal plate at the top of the kettle. The heat causes the metal plate to bend and that turns off the switch. So you could say that an electric kettle feels when the water's boiling. Okay, now I understand. Hey, why do you need three bowls? You don't need to make any oatmeal for us. It's not for you guys. It's for my mom and dad. Start out here. No! Keep pouring into this one. And I say pour it here. And I say first you should pour it into mine. Oh, Nolik, where are you? I'll find him. Hang on, I'm going in. Simka! She was right over here. <sighs> Nolik! Over here. Simka! 
Here. No lick. There. Ow! Hey, where is your other boot? It got lost. Up there in the oatmeal. That must be your parents. Let's get out of here. Hey, and what about your shoe? Don't worry. I got another one. Hi, Tom Thomas. We're back. You must be hungry. We'll make you something to eat. But I already prepared us some food. And the water's already hot. Wash your hands. Tom Thomas, don't touch that kettle if it's hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. Yum, 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 so yum. today we're eating oatmeal for dinner. Delicious. Uh, maybe you have something else? Why something else? You're the ones that say that oatmeal's great for you and that it makes us stronger. Well, yeah, that's what we say. I'm glad that our son pays such careful attention. Mmm, <laughs> isn't it delicious? Really? Huh, what's that? Oh, look, you found the boot, Dad. What? <laughs> Uh, it's nothing. Just eat your food and don't get distracted. I'd like to see that oatmeal all gone, okay? And whoever doesn't finish won't get any candy. The DVD. Chusaka, get away from here. So where did it go? Oh, here it is. Hey there, Tom Thomas. So what's on the disc? Hi there, Nolik. Hi there, Simka. It's a cartoon about Gulliver in the land of Lilypoop. My friend Jeannie let me borrow it. I have it till tomorrow. And what's the story about? Well, it's about this guy who gets shipwrecked where the people are just so teeny, teeny, tiny. Fixies, you mean? No, not fixies. Lilliputians. Lilliputians? Uh-huh. Know what, Simka? I think that you fixies might have come from those Lilliputians. No way! Our grandpa told us a completely different story of the fixies. <laughs> When something is very well made, then the saying goes that it was made with just a little bit of salt. In old times, craftsmen made things to last, and in each appliance, they would leave just a little piece of their soul. Those little pieces of their soul would turn into tiny craftsmen called fixies, who would then make the appliance their home and take care of it every day. And that's how the very first fixies came about. But as the years have passed, fewer things are being made by hand, and more and more things are getting made by machines in factories. That means there are less and less new fixies coming from human souls. Luckily, fixies can fall in love with each other and have their own family, raising their children and teaching them well, so they'll grow up to become skillful and honest master fixie repairmen. So you're mistaken. We're not Lilliputians at all. We're fixies. Yeah. Fixies! Listen, Tom Thomas, why don't you show us the movie? Yeah, yeah, I want to learn about Lilliputians, too! Really, I do! Sure, I'll show you. Oh, no! What's going on? I broke it, ugh! I can't give her back a disc that's messed up. Don't panic! We'll take a look at it. Come lay it down over here. Huh. Tom Thomas, why is this disc all covered in jelly? Because I was touching it with my fingers. I mean, uh, what else? It's obvious you don't know how a disc works at all. And you know how it works? Yeah, I know. Yeah? If we take a look at a digital disc through a powerful microscope, we can see rows of tiny valleys of different lengths. These valleys are actually a code for the cartoons, games, or music recorded onto the disc. Inside a disc player, a laser beam reads the code and helps turn it back into pictures and sounds. But if you scratch the disc or smudge the disc with dirty fingers, the laser can't read it and the disc won't play. That's why 
you need to keep discs clean and stored in cases. So that's why you should only hold discs along the edges. And when you're done watching them, you have to put them back inside their boxes. And what about this one? Do we have to get rid of it? Not so fast. Nolik, this calls for a major cleaning. Let's get the brooms. Thomas, check the disc. There you go. Now you're holding it right. Hooray! The disc works fine. Hooray! Now we can watch the movie about the Lilliputians. Hey, Gulliver, why are you sitting there? You've seen this movie already. I know in what. What, what? Look at that pile of discs. Where do you need to put them? Huh. In their boxes. The washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, Nolik, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nolik, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. <laughs> Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on, we're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. <laughs> Whoa! Nolik, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. Oh, yeah. 
You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. And three! What is that? <gasps> oh, my goodness! Oh, my sweet little baby! How did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan! Run! The internet. Well, maybe it's a... Uh... Don't think so. It's probably a... Uh... You call for me, children? What's the matter? Take a look. I've never seen anything like it. What in the world could it be? Hit. Maybe it's a bathroom scale? Or a clock with a digital display. Wait a sec. Are there instructions around here for this thing? I couldn't find them anywhere. That's a problem. Well, then let's try to figure it out. What are you trying to figure out up there? What a huge hockey puck. It's big enough for a monster. <laughs> and the name is so silly. T-Robot. <laughs> Why don't they just call it the troll butt? Or I got it, the troll boat. <laughs> Please, stop the racket. So what could this thing do, huh? I have no idea. We could try finding it on the internet. Where? Just run along, you two. We don't need any internets. We can handle this. Go on, go. Don't interrupt us. Sure, whatever you say. Come, Nolik. We'll find it out by ourselves. Yeah. Uh, how? So, you remember what it was called? Uh-huh. Uh, a troll boat. Nah. A troll bot. You're right. Hop to it. A robotic vacuum cleaner. You mean it vacuums by itself? It's a robot, so yeah. Class, there's just so much cool stuff in this computer. No, look, this information is not on this computer. It's on the internet. From your computer, you can send a letter to another computer. You can also download a song or a photo from another computer. That's all possible because most of the computers in the world are connected to one another as part of a huge web. And this World Wide Web is what we call the Internet. Thanks to the Internet, we can take a peek at just about anywhere in the world and find information we need about anything. It's an electronic vegetable slicer. No, it's a printer for round sheets of paper. There's no way. Grandpoos, we found out what they do with it. You're back again? You, you mustn't, mustn't interrupt, interrupt the adult. Just wait a second. Nolik, turn it on. Uh, turn what on? Don't you turn on anything. Ready, Ready set, jump! jump. What? <laughs> What was 
that? It's a robotic vacuum cleaner. It runs itself. And where did you find the instructions for it? On the internet. Just ask and it tells you. You can really just ask and it tells you? Uh-huh. If you want, we can show you. We'd love to see it. Sure, why not? Yep. Whoa! <laughs> hmm, on the internet. Hey, 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 wait for me! What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? The answer's easy to get. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. You send a letter to me. I send a letter to you. You send a letter to me. It's just so easy to do. We're writing letters now. The fun is sending to get. We're writing letters now to the internet. Fixies. Did you come to see what I'm working on? <laughs> Professor Eugenius, tell us what you're planning on doing with this huge thing. Well, I hope to use this fantastic device to make contact with aliens. Since ancient times, people have wondered, is there life on other planets? What might aliens from outer space look like? And what kind of spaceships do they travel in? There are some people who say that they've seen alien spaceships and that they look like flying saucers. There are even some people who say they've actually made contact with aliens. But personally, I'm sure it's just their fantasy. And science hasn't been able to prove any of these stories either. The one story that makes me laugh harder than all of the rest comes from a guy who claims that he saw aliens with his own eyes. Can you believe it? He said that there was a group of tiny aliens that looked like humans with glowing hair. It seems to me that this guy just happened to spot a few fixies who weren't able to hide from him in time. <laughs> Ready. If I could talk and now what? The if the aliens are out there flying by the Earth, they'll see this plate get hungry and come for food? <laughs> aliens don't need a plate like this, silly, when they've got plates that fly, flying saucers. You're both silly. This thing isn't a plate at all. It's an antenna. Antenna? Antennas help people receive radio signals. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, like this, this, or this, to pick up a signal that's very weak. Powerful antennas that are shaped like large dishes work the best of all. When radio waves hit the dish, the waves all bounce off of it and gather together into one point. This makes the signal stronger and clearer. The most powerful dish antennas can even pick up signals from outer space. No, look, stop! You'll burn yourself! Don't treat me like a baby boy, okay? Ah, interesting. I wonder what's inside of there, do you know? Why don't we go and take a look? <laughs> I was only trying to help him out. No need, Nola. The soldering iron is way too hot, and I'm practically all done here. Ta -ta. Then let's start looking for those aliens in outer space. <laughs> Just one second, Nolik. Now, uh-huh. Here we go. Nolan, Simka, let's see if we can pick up signals from outer space. Right now? 
Where the aliens live? What if they're sleeping? Quit bothering the professor with your nonsense. Let us out right now. Can't you hear us? Please let us out! I'm afraid there's no way they can hear us from this far away. Uh, I can't hear any signals. It just sounds like static. Be patient, you guys, and keep listening. Digit, we all know how clever you are. Can't you think of a way out of here? I think I got it, Tula. You stay there. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'll use a special code I know to send a signal that we're in trouble. Hmm. Wait a second. Do you hear that? Could it be a signal from the alien? Hooray! This is sensational. <gasps> it means that somewhere in the cosmos are intelligent forms of life. Three dots, three dashes, three dots. Ooh, it's Morse code. It's a signal for help that they're sending. You don't think the aliens are in trouble, do you? Yeah, I think so. And who do you think they learned Morse code from out there? Yeah, that's strange. There are hardly any fixies that know that code. Digit does. Ah, oh. and where is he, you know? And where's Tula? Well, well, I think I know exactly with which aliens we made contact. I think I know it too, Professor. Lower the antenna. Greetings to you, oh extraterrestrial visitors. Hi there. <laughs> it's good to be back. Uh, oh. Uh, what a shame. I was really hoping that we'd find intelligent life forms out there. It's all right. <laughs> At least we found two unintelligent ones. <laughs> <laughs> the key card. Whoopa! Well, Professor Eugenius, your kennel's back in action. Tiddy! Oh, why, thank you. I've been longing for a cup of tea. Yes. There's no tea left in here. Uh, mm. Then I'll go ask Lisa if she has some. <gasps> Look! Professor Eugenius! You forgot the key! The key! Don't close the door! Simka, you must be joking. That's a key. This is nothing but a plastic card. But it is a key. A special kind. It's called a key card. To open up a combination lock, you need to enter a code in the correct order. That means if you can't remember the code, you can't open the lock. But if the lock uses a key card, there isn't any code to memorize. Because the code is held inside the card's memory. And the lock can read the code from the card. Of course, key cards don't work with any lock. They have to be smart locks that are able to read electronic codes. When the smart lock reads the correct code, it opens right up. Lisa, do we have any tea here? Of course, Professor Eugenius. Wonderful. I'll take one bag then. Oh, I left my key inside the lab. Can I borrow yours? Just don't forget to give it back. Of course I'll give it back. Come on, Elisa. I got myself a tea bag. Professor da -de 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 -de. Eugenius, the water's boiling. Fantastic. Ta -da -ta 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 -ta. Ch -ch -chai. Wait a second. Ah, oh no, I was supposed to give something back to Elisa. Why don't you go and ask her? Right. I'll be right back. <laughs> Professor Eugenius! That's card number two now. Elisa, I promised you something, didn't I? Yes, the key. You said you'd return it. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me get it. Just a sec. Oh, 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 I locked it in the lab. It's terrible. How will you ever get back into the laboratory now? You see, there is one way, but it's a secret. Would you mind leaving for a couple of minutes? Colleague, Professor, can you do me a little favor? The key. I think I left it on the table. Yeah, right. It's true. So how do we solve this? I need to think about it. What's there to think about? We just have to go and push it under the door. You think you can do it? Yeah! It's time to get to work. Hey, what's going on? Oh, were you just calling for me? Yeah, uh, no, Lisa, not for you. It's so heavy. Do you know where Digit ran off to? Uh -oh. <sighs> Digit's off somewhere thinking. He's always doing that when it's time to work. Ugh. Hard to port. Hard to starboard. Way to go, Nolik. Uh, uh, then who were you talking?
talking to? <laughs> Actually... Oh, what's that? <laughs> Where? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that? Come on, let's try again. <laughs> Look, do you see that? Ah, uh, that, it's a uh, telekinesis. <sighs> it's the power to transport things with your mind. You are just astounding. <gasps> Was that done with your mind, too? The door? Yeah, sure. You are a genius. <laughs> Professor Eugenius is a very talented scientist and a dear old friend of the Fixies. He always helps the Fixies, and the Fixies are happy to help him, too. Professor Eugenius let the Fixies set up their school right here at his laboratory. It's hard to imagine a better place for a Fixie school. People from all over the city bring all sorts of things to the laboratory to be tested, from computers, phones, and furniture, to food and toys. Professor Eugenius uses his expertise to check the quality of all these different things. To help him carry out his experiment, his laboratory is filled with a variety of tools and machines. Yes, Professor Eugenius is a very smart man, but he can be absent-minded. Lucky for him, he's got us fixies around. Thanks for everything. Sliding the keycard under the door? That was Simka's awesome idea. But the door opened wide while the card was still on the floor. That's strange. There's nothing strange about it. I'm the one who opened it. How? how? I climbed in the lock, that's all. Figured out how it worked and... Tidish. Very clever. That's a real tidish. I guess that thinking before you go and fix something ought to be what we all study next. 